When two of Muhammad's followers were quarreling over water rights, they brought the case before Muhammad. On hearing Muhammad's judgment, one man became angry and accused him of favoritism. The color of Muhammad's face changed with anger at this accusation, and Surah 465 was conveniently revealed. But no, by your Lord, they will not truly believe until they make you, O Muhammad, judge concerning that over which they dispute among themselves, and then find within themselves no discomfort from what you have judged, and submit in full willing submission. Therefore, Muhammad was appointed judge over the early Muslims. However, in spite of the incredibly high esteem Muslims share for their prophet, his judgment was horribly flawed on many occasions. Muhammad executed without trial. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6877, a girl wearing ornaments went out at Medina. Somebody struck her with a stone. She was brought to the prophet while she was still alive. Allah's messenger asked her, Did such and such a person strike you? She raised her head, denying that. He asked her a second time, and then a third time. And she lowered her head, agreeing. Allah's messenger then sent for the killer and killed him between two stones. The Hadith makes no mention of Muhammad asking for witnesses or trying to ascertain if the man the girl named was indeed the killer. This sort of careless judgment was continued by the caliphs. When a man was brought to Ali and accused of stealing in Bukhari chapter 21, book 87, Ali had the man's hand chopped off. Later, the two men confessed that they were wrong about the thief's identity, and the alleged criminal's hand was chopped off in error. Muhammad certainly set a poor example in this area. Naturally, one must be sane to be punished under Islamic law. When a man came forward to confess to illegal sexual intercourse, Muhammad ascertained the man's sanity in the following way. The prophet said to him, Are you mad? The man said, No. So the prophet said, Take him away and stone him to death. What kind of person ascertains another's sanity by asking them if they're sane? A trademark of a person who is insane is that they don't know that they are. Muhammad makes no effort to determine the man's mental condition from his relatives or friends. He simply takes the man's word for it and has him stoned to death. Muhammad had a rule that a man and a wife had to engage in sexual intercourse before they could get divorced. This even included a woman being abused by her husband. She was beaten so badly her skin had turned green. She came to Aisha for help, and Aisha brought the case before Muhammad. When the woman expressed that she wanted to be divorced from her abuser and marry her previous husband, Muhammad replied, If that is your intention, that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless Abdurrahman, her abusive husband, has had sexual intercourse with you. Even in the case of a husband who beat his wife until her skin was bruised green, Muhammad's judgment was that she needed to have intercourse before she could divorce him. And finally, Muhammad acknowledged that his own judgment was flawed. The prophet said, I am only a human being, and you people have disputes. Maybe someone amongst you can present his case in a more eloquent and convincing manner than the other, and I give my judgment in his favor, according to what I hear. Beware, if I ever give by error somebody something of his brother's right, that he should not take it, as I have only given him a piece of fire." Muhammad's judgments were barbaric. The prophet said the hand should be cut off for stealing something that is worth a quarter of a dinar or more. Muhammad practiced this himself. When a woman who committed theft was brought to him, he ordered her hand to be cut off. Muhammad even said, but I would cut off the hand of Fatima, that's his daughter, if she committed a theft. When a drunk was brought to Muhammad, he ordered the drunk man beaten. So some of us beat him with our hands and some with their shoes and some with their garments by twisting it like a lash. Sahih Bukhari 67, 77. Some men murdered one of Muhammad's shepherds and stole camels. Now, these men were guilty of murder, granted. However, Muhammad's judgment seems a bit sadistic. He then ordered to cut their hands and feet, and their eyes were branded with heated pieces of iron, and he threw them into the sun till they died. A custodian refused to tell Muhammad the location of some money. Muhammad told the man that if he was being dishonest and it was discovered, that the man would be killed. When the treasure was found, proving the man had been hiding it from Muhammad, he gave orders to torture him until you extract what he has. Surat Rizul Allah, page 515. Muhammad's men then built a fire on the man's chest and burned him until he nearly died. After this, he was beheaded. To summarize, Muhammad's judgments were barbaric and spurious. They were inherently flawed by his own admission. 
He ordered a woman's hand chopped off for theft and even ordered an abused woman to have sexual intercourse with her abusive husband before she would be granted divorce. He ordered drunks to be disciplined by mass beatings and tortured criminals with fire and hot nails. Given Muhammad's reprehensible judgments, it is no wonder one of his early followers called them into question, and no wonder Muhammad required a divine revelation from Allah in Surah 465 to silence his critics.